And uh, so welcome to the Valley Film Festival. And with us is uh, Steve Harold, director of Wamiya, uh, a short film, uh, an insane short film, I have to say, uh, <laughs> a comedy uh, here at the Valley Film Festival. Uh, Steve, uh, first of all, congratulations on getting into the Valley Film Festival. And Thank welcome. you. Thank you. Uh, what is your film about? Tell everybody watching what your movie is about. Well, I got to, not to be a, a wanker, but I got to correct you. It's pronounced Wyamea. Wyamea. Uh, I knew I was going to pronounce it wrong. I yeah, knew I was going to. Uh, you know, from Wyamea. Uh, why, why um, but uh, it's, it's basically a, the film without giving too much away. So we've been, tr I mean, you know, just trying to keep a little bit of the plot under wraps. But it's basically about a married couple who kind of have to deal with sort of like a unique situation, kind of testing their marriage with this unique situation that, that ar uh, arises. That that is uh, that is the the vaguest description of your movie I think possible. <laughs> you know, it's uh, one of those things. It's like I mean, it's a short film. It's not like we're some big budget Hollywood film where you were like we're trying to keep it secret. But I guess you know, it's still kind of we're still trying to kind well, of. It, it, you have a style that's very much about revealing uh, yeah, yeah. things, and and yeah. and and I, I I love that about the movie, man. I I, I really dug it. Thank you. Um, you know, as I as I was I, I was watching it. Um, uh, just before uh, just before uh, uh, today's interview, you know, it, it struck me because I, 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 when you first start watching it, you're not sure where it's going. You're not right. sure what's happening. It sets off on a very different tone uh, than than you end up finding yourself on. And there's a lot of twists and turns uh, for uh, for yeah, an interesting uh, 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 examination of marriage. I have to ask you, uh, are you married? Because I feel like this was made by somebody who's married. No, I'm I'm not married. Uh, but the, the film was actually inspired by um, other, like our last film that we did that was in festivals, I guess in 2018. Um, and we, you know, this was obviously before COVID. So we were able to go to a lot of these screens. It was a little bit easier back then, but I, we kept seeing these films and they were good films, but we saw a lot of them that sort of had this same kind of like misdirect and they were all dramas. Um, and it just struck me like, you know, I'm sure, you know, you yourself, you've been to film festivals. You, there's sometimes you see stuff that's very similar in, in, uh, in various films. And, but it just struck me that like these festivals we're going to, these other films we're playing with all kind of were sort of using the same sort of plot device of this misdirect of like, we think this husband is dying. And then we find out, no, he's not dying. His wife is dying. You know, when right. he went to that support group, it was for spouses, et cetera, et cetera. So we kind of, um, so I just kind of saw that and I was like, I'd love to kind of play with that idea, like in a comedy, you know, like I remember coming out of one of those screenings and I was talking outside with uh, my friend, Doug, who was the AC on the film. And we were just talking about that, how there are these similarities in these films we were seeing. And, you know, I've got kind of a weird twisted sense of humor. And I was kind of like, I probably would have, I, I was kind of hoping they would have done this, you know, uh, instead of stuck with this heavy drama. And that kind of got the ball rolling about this idea of kind of trying to trick the audience and try to misdirect, but with a comedy instead of, you know, this heavy drama dealing with a, you know, a real serious, heavy subject, you know? Yeah, there's, a, you know, I always have a, a complaint in, in, uh, in the indie film or short film community that sometimes people you know, make a lot of dramas and not a lot of comedies get made. Uh, well, not as many anyway, it doesn't seem like, uh, you know, and usually the dramas are usually about somebody dying of something. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, um, a lot of, a lot a lot of, of them was dramas. even about a dog dying. <laughs> like there you a go. Dog, guy walking a dog and then you find out this whole time that you saw him with his dog, well, that dog's dead, you know, <laughs> <laughs> at the end it was like, you know, but it, 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 yeah, it was just, and then again, like, I'm not saying anything bad no. about the films. They were good. They were well-made. They were good films, but it just was just like, Hey, we're seeing this over and over again, you know, yeah. this kind of idea, you know? Um, but yeah, I know what you mean. And, and it's nice. I, and, and, you know, I, I'm a big fan of, of, of comedy uh, short films and, and films in general, uh, because I'm a comedian and I am a, a filmmaker, but you know, it's, it, it's a lot about, for me, it's, 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 it, I just, I want to thank you for making a comedy and going that route. I did uh, it and just making me laugh. You, Dave. I, I appreciate it. I thought you did. I don't care about anybody else. Because <laughs> like as I'm watching it, I'm like, oh, okay, I thought this was a comedy. Because you, you, you misdirect us a little bit at the beginning. Right, right, and then yeah. once once the turns start happening, yeah. I, I was just so happy and, and, and so enjoyed what you did. Um, there's a lot of technique in this movie. 
Uh, there's a lot of uh, attention to detail uh, and a lot of a lot of use of of, of film technique in, in like in slow motion, but also black and white and color, and using those to separate sort of emotional ideas again without revealing too much. Um, you know, in this as you explore this married couple going through a, a, an event of sorts. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, what? What? Why did you feel? What, what? What? Where did that come from? That the inspiration for the black and white and the color and the, 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 and, the and your style well, of filmmaking. All, uh, in it's general. funny. It's funny because. The last film we did was in black and white, and and it worked for what that film was and the tone of that film and everything and the style. It worked for that, but and then when we did this film, it wasn't supposed to be. We weren't supposed to use black and white. We had ideas of playing with color, like what what we use black and white and color in the film. Originally, it was supposed to be all color and just using different saturations okay. of color and everything. And we tried that. And it just, it didn't, it, it felt like it might be a little confusing, like it wasn't standing out enough. So that's why we decided, like, I didn't want to use black and white because I felt like, honestly, like you maybe, you know, this may not be a surprise to you. Sometimes I feel like with uh, film festivals, black and white, for lack of a better term, it's a little bit of a red flag, I think sometimes, you know, and if you're using, and you gotta, and I feel like if you're gonna use it, you need to really be using it for a reason without sounding pretentious. And I didn't wanna use black and white, you know, I, I, I really didn't want to, but like I said, we did these tests with the color and different saturations and it just wasn't really coming, what we wanted to come across, it didn't seem like it was really working. So it was just like, I think we got to use black and white to sort of separate these things. And then we decided to kind of, well, let's not go the, the usual route of using black and white and color, how people usually use it. Let's like kind of flip it and stuff like that. At least that might seem a little more interesting. But the, um, some of the other things you're referring to actually, um, some of the little like kind of moments in the film was a direct sort of inspiration I happened I don't even I, I don't even remember if it was before or after we started writing the script, you know. But I saw this film. Um, I think it's called Two for the Road. Are you familiar with that? I think it's Albert Finney and I think Audrey Hepburn. Yeah, it's been a long time, but yeah, yeah. But they did they did this certain thing in that film, sort of showing their relationship in different stages, and and it just kind of like stood out to me. And I I said, you know, I, I think we can do something kind of interesting using that sort of idea with our little film, you know, and, and revealing this couple's relationship, you know? Um, so that's kind of where that came from, the, that stuff came from. And then, like I said, the color in black and white was, you know, for those I, reasons. And, and, I, and I, I say, I love how you explore their relationship. It, again, it's a very absurd comedy. It's, yeah, yeah. it's very big, it's very, it's Broad, crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's surprisingly violent. Uh, <laughs> But at the same time, you you have these juxtapositions of of yeah. because you show a little bit of how they got together, right. um, and it's 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 romantic, it's grounded, and it it, it was it was actually a, a emotionally effective as well. Is that that you didn't just use it as a button to a joke, you right, use the right. the comedy and the emotion of the moment of what they're fighting over, to really delve into something a little bit deeper. To be honest. Right. Yeah, I'm glad uh, to hear you say that. And and I really enjoyed that. I thought that that showed a um you know a, a real a deft hand at at filmmaking and um uh, and you didn't you didn't you didn't you didn't you didn't phone this in. Let's put it that way. You, you didn't right. phone this in. Tell well, me about you say that because I actually did. I wasn't even on set when we filmed it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, a cardboard cut out of me up there and put my phone there and i just like i sat at home in bed why bother why bother well, well if you ended up shooting it in, during covid i know you didn't um you know you probably might have yeah, had to do have. that well uh, we did we did just shoot a film last summer and trying to deal with all that and it's very without us getting all into that it's it it was it's very tricky like we designed the film that we did last summer be, like with that in mind because right. You know, I mean, big you budget productions, it's a little easier for them to kind of work around that indie. Like that was when when everything happened last year, that was like the big kind of idea or, you know, out there for like us indie filmmakers, like, well, how are we going yeah, how, how, how how to make this work? Yeah, right. you know, we yeah. don't have the, the resources that the studios have. They'll figure out ways to do that. Right. We don't necessarily have those kind of resources. We have to kind of rethink things, you know, but but yeah, I mean, we could have never made this film 
a year later or something like that you know i i did find it interesting there is a prop used in the film it's a book i won't give away what it's about but um but the the, the title of the book i caught was lockdown was that a bit of, of prescience on your- actually no it's funny to say that no we didn't we had no foresight we had we had nothing to do it wasn't our fault man (laughs) but it's funny you say that because all the books that are in the movie are all fake except that book is real our our uh our production manager slash assistant director scott black who i've worked with for years on these projects he wrote that book it's it's oh. a real book that he wrote yeah and we, oh, just that's wrote, awesome. we gotta we gotta put it in there you know like, well, they're you know. great and and yeah, what yeah. a that was was the book about no what i'm assuming the book was about something else no, um, no, no, yeah. uh, there's a lot of fight scenes in the in the movie i i've done i've done my fair share of those as a director and uh there are a lot of fun take a lot of work how'd that go for you and did the did your actors have um any kind of fight training or background because they they seem to to move pretty well for uh... no i think it was just that patty i think deep down she won't admit it but she hates kevin so she took <laughs> great joy in beating the hell out no no i'm just kidding they, they were both great we we um we really kind of rehearsed it and blocked it, it uh with both patty and kevin i've worked with kevin a bunch of times this is the first time i worked with patty um we all got together in the lo- location with our dp john and we just kind of blocked it and basically just kind of like you know, rehearsed it and just step by step and figured it all out, which was great because especially having the DP there, because it was almost like we sort of pre-visioned it, you know, we sort of, so when we got on set, we kind of knew, um, we had kind of done our homework. We knew exactly where we're going and it made things go a lot smoother. We knew exactly what we were, what we were going for and everything, but neither one of them did, but you know, you know, actors, I mean, they, things like this, they love doing, they jump yeah. right in and get the chance to really be physical and whatever. And, and again, like I said, I don't, I don't know necessarily if either one of them had really done a lot of that kind of like real physical stuff. So I'm sh- I, I know they had a blast doing it and I had a great time working with both of them. What was the production like? I mean, how long did you guys shoot for, I mean, this is a, a fairly complex film when you, when you, yeah. when you step back from it, you got a lot of locations flashbacks fight scenes take a while what was what was production like for you we shot um three weekends i think yeah i think it was three weekends and we kind of um shot it in order you know which as we all know usually you don't do but it just sort of made for the most part we we shot like all the fight stuff we pretty much shot in order um and there and again like you know there are certain things w- that had to kind of match up so we had to be very specific but again that's where doing that rehearsal with the dp there like filming stuff with just like the phone and just sort of knowing like how everything was going to match up and you know even like on set you know i on my phone i had all of our rehearsal footage so if we were trying like if it's like uh, you know trying to remember like well, how did how did we work this out it, like i could just pull up the video on the phone from the rehearsal and just be like here this is what we this is what we did and uh but it was it was basically three weekends okay um it was uh, uh I mean, th- three weekends that's that seems reasonable that isn't that isn't that's just too, too horrible so when you say you shot an order you you shot not necessarily uh the order of the script not necessarily the order of the uh, of the relationship uh no just the fight <laughs> stuff yeah, yeah. Just, they, just they'd the have to be going back and forth, back and yeah, forth, yeah. and that'd be that'd be. Yeah, um, no, no, no. It was it was uh, it was just the fight stuff that we shot in the order. Order. All the other stuff was just kind of like, hey, let's pick, you know, get these shots here. We get we're in that same place. We can get this shot. Whatever. That was done sort of like quote unquote the normal way. You usually schedule a a shoot, but the the fight stuff just seemed like it made sense to do it in order. Yeah. Uh, what, what advice would you, would you give a filmmaker? You've made films before and you're working on, on more. What, what, what would you tell somebody starting out making their, their first short film? I think, and the fact that you're a comedian and a filmmaker, I think I'd be surprised if you didn't agree with this. And I, I've run into this a little bit in the uh, projects I've worked on. I, I think, especially when it comes to comedy, I, I think you just, you have to just do what, what you feel is the right thing. You can't be second guessing yourself. You can't be worried about, oh, how is the audience going to react to this? You know, like you just got, hey, if this is what makes you laugh. If this is what you want to see, then just do that. Don't second guess yourself. I don't know if this is funny. I don't know. I mean, sure, it's good to get feedback when you write something from people and everything like that. But 
I think sometimes you just have to go with your gut with this. And again, I'm pretty much specifically talking about comedy, you know, and just be like, hey, you know, I find this funny. This is what I want to see. This is what I'm going to do. And, and you just can't really uh, second guess yourself. Just just do that. You know, I mean, the typical things, the advice for filmmakers and stuff is just to make films, you know, like it's all, you know, I, I've spent a lot of years kind of bumbling and stumbling on projects and different at different levels of this industry and stuff. And, you know, there are times where you look back and you're just like, oh, you know, we spent so much time working on that and it ended up, you know, nothing came of it, you know? And, and it's like, we could have made like a film during that or whatever. So I feel like you just got to kind of go do your thing. And like I said, just kind of stick with your gut and don't really second guess yourself, you know? I think that's great advice, you know, especially in comedy, you have to, it's all about following. I got it. Ultimately, it was in my fortune. It was in my fortune cookie I had for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I'm hungry. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's, it's good advice because especially yeah. in comedy, you have to, it's all about following your instinct. And that's when, yeah, you, exactly. find, you know, um, you know, and stand up when you're starting to really surf on stage, so to speak, it's because you're following right. those instincts and not yeah, censoring right. yourself and not saying, no, I'm stupid. I don't want to do that. Yeah, um, yeah. And nowadays, there really is no reason not to make a movie, right? Everybody can. No, not at all. No. What, what did you shoot on, actually? I mean, I, 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 um... We shot on a Sony A7S. Okay. You know, okay nothing good. too fancy, but, you know, our, our DP had that camera. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm not, like, um, that picky as far as, like, hey, we can get a good image from this camera. It make, you know, you can get a good image from that camera. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not one who's like, you know, we got to shoot this with a red or, you know, an Alexa or something, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm like, Hey, it looks good. You know, I'm not that picky about, you know, uh, you know, which camera we shoot on, as we all know, you can get great images. I mean, um, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Sean Baker shooting that film with a, his iPhone, you know? So, I mean, you know, it, it's a lot of, it's got more to do with, you know, what how you shoot it like you know how you light it and whatever but like the camera i thought you know did a, you know the camera i was really happy with and wasn't too picky about that you know i thought the film looked great um and uh it's uh, i it really did and i thought it was just very well done um what why did you become a filmmaker what what made you go like pick up a camera and start telling stories um i always wanted to since i was a kid probably when i was a kid I saw it's it's you know the cliche answer is probably like a one-two punch of King Kong and Star Wars you know like a lot of us you know you saw those movies and it just I mean I, I drew I draw cart I can draw cartoons and just naturally was able to draw cartoons so I was always doing that when I was young and but then I think when I saw those movies it kind of cartoons kind of I mean I still drew cartoons but the idea of like pursuing that as a career or anything went out the window. Now it was just all about movies. And, you know, I just, uh, I just always had a love for uh, films, Hollywood comedy, you know, just all that stuff. I mean, that's how I became a Rams fan because they were the Los Angeles Rams, you know, I mean, that was, that was the reason it was just hot. They were in Hollywood, you know? And uh, so it, it was really those two films. And then, but later, you know, it, like if you were to ask me who are your influences and stuff like that, it's it's there aren't any filmmakers, you know, none of them are filmmakers. It's all comedians. It's all the original Saturday Night Live cast, the Saturday Night Live, right, the writers from that, you know, I mean, I was a teenager and I knew who the writers were from the original Saturday Night Live, not just that I knew who Chevy Chase and Belushi were. I knew who Alan Zweibel were, you know, you know, was or Michael O'Donoghue or, uh, you know, Ann Bates, you know, um, and then Gary Shandling. But what it, this film in particular, I kind of put my love of, there was a British uh, TV show called The Young Ones. And it, MTV used to air it when we finally got cable and it was on MTV. And I saw that thing, man. And, you know, that just blew my mind. Uh, and there's, uh, if you're a fan of The Young Ones, you'll pick up all the references in this film. Because the, I always like thank them in the credits because that that show really kind of like, you know, changed my kind of viewpoint of comedy and everything, you know, I mean, I loved Chris Elliott from the Letterman show and he's sort of weird like that too. But, but, um, but yeah, I just, it was, it, you know, my, my influences, it was like those two movies kind of opened the eyes, but it was really like comedians and stuff, you know, we were making TV and film and everything. That, that's really, that's fun to hear. Cause when I, when I think back to the original cast of SNL, that first, certainly the first couple seasons, 
um, especially that first season. Yeah. I loved the level of, it's also what I like about Kids in the Hall, the level of surrealism and yeah. um, uh, and, and, and a kind of a, a theatrical style, almost Brechtian type style that's mixed in, that creates yeah, this absurd yeah. juxtaposition. One of my yeah, favorite sketches sure. is where Belushi comes down from, um, they're in a hotel or something. And it, it's just, I remember it being a very surreal grounded uh, 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 sketch that also just kept going and became absurd and absurd. And I, yeah. I see some of that in your work. I see it. I see oh, thank it. You. Uh, you know? Yeah. I mean, well, that's those people. I mean, you know, Gilda, I mean, I love Gilda. Gilda. She was the greatest and uh, all, that whole cast. And, and like I said, the writers, I mean, just huge influence on me. I mean, you know, I couldn't, you know, I'd read every book there was about that show and everything, you know, so it's like sometimes weird when you go to these festivals and stuff and they want to hear your influences and everyone else is talking about these filmmakers, you know, and I'm like, you ever heard of the young ones? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, it, but yeah, I, I agree. It's, it, it, it's very interesting in that cast and those writers and, you know, and certainly Lauren Michaels just, you know, beyond talent, you know. Now, now, why, why, uh, why Mia? Why Mia? Why Mia? Why Mia? Why Mia? Why Mia? And uh, well, uh, like, is that place you like to go? No, I've never been to Why Mia. Uh, my brother's a surfer. There's a, it's a famous surfing spot in Hawaii, Why Mia Bay. Okay. Um, and I'd watch surfing videos with him, and I, I've taken my stabs at surfing, but I'm terrible at it. Um, but the, but it comes from uh, the original title was Why Me. So um, I used to always say, instead of saying like, when you, like I'd want to just like a reaction to something like, why me? I would always say, why Amaya? You know, like for some dumb reason, <laughs> I knew why Amaya from the surf videos. So I'd always say like, why Amaya? And, you know, we, we had the title, why me? And something I, when I was talking to James Palmer, who co-wrote it with me <clears throat> and he did all the music, something just kind of popped into my head the script was written. There was no mention of why Amaya or anything. And I remembered that I used to always do that, always say like, why Amaya? Like almost with like a bad Italian accent, you know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, and I just said to him, I said, that'd be kind of like interesting to have like this film like titled why Amaya. Like I like the idea of that, of like the film having a title that's sort of like, why is it called that? You know? Yeah. And, and obviously we found a way to kind of no, it makes it makes total up. sense once you see the but, film. But that's where it came from. It it really it wasn't it wasn't in the script originally. Why why Maya wasn't mentioned. Um, the title was Why Me, and um, and we and I just had that idea, and then you know talked to him, and he was cool. I don't think he was crazy about it at first, but then I kind of talked him into the idea, and then we found a way to kind of make it makes sense so that's where the why we use that title and i'd love to go to YMA. i wish i could you know but uh one of these days if there's a film festival there they, they should they should play this one uh um, yeah what, well the what? funny thing is um real quick the funny thing was like i always knew Waimea bay and i just assumed that was that area was called Waimea, but there's actually a Waimea bay in hawaii and a Waimea. okay and Waimea Bay is the beach and everything. Waimea, I think it's on a different island and it's like far, it's like in the mountains and stuff. Oh. And I was like, oh, that doesn't really work for this. So I had to make a point that we mentioned like Waimea Bay, but they're just, you know, a lot of people refer to it Waimea Bay still as Waimea, but I didn't know that at all. And then I just, out of curiosity, after I, you know, when we were uh, getting ready to shoot the film, I just decided to like look, you know, at some pictures. And I, all of a sudden I was like, uh oh. You know, <laughs> better make sure she says why I may obey, you know, so people don't think I, I, I love the title. It, it um, you know, especially once you see that when you sound like, what is this going to be about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you start watching it. Oh, okay. I get it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, it's nice. I like it. And it, it encapsulates everything about the, the sort of the, 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 the wishful thinking of the characters in, yeah, the, yeah. in the movie. I love the, away. and James Palmer, uh, you know, he did the, all the music as well. Like, music is incredible. I love the yeah, music. He, I love the uh, little Hawaiian uh music he came up with at the end like that was one of the first pieces and uh and i just was like yeah man you hit it out of the park with that no one. and i i love his uh i love i love the score it, it plays right along with your editing and, and he hits things right. exactly on i there's there's moments in that where the the score really does sort of uh not just help and accentuate the comedy but 
uh, is rhythmically involved in the comedy. Right, and right. I think that's that's pretty awesome. What's right. next for you? What are you what are you doing? Uh, what other films well, you got coming on? You got a feature? Well, like What's I said, we on? did the we did the sh we shot another short in uh, in the summertime, and we're editing that. Um, kind of like a little bit on hold right now because I'm working on this uh, gig in New Mexico. So kind of that's a little the editing is a little bit on hold for that so we're editing that and i'm uh you know i'm like we, it's we got to jump to a feature you know we've just been kind of like putting it off a little bit too long and so uh i'm working on a we just finished like a new draft like literally two days ago my friend chad who i uh, used to be in a sketch comedy group with uh he lives out in uh, sherman oaks um and uh he and i just finished uh like the latest draft of this feature comedy that we're working on so you know hopefully we'll be able to kind of you know maybe next year kind of get that up and rolling well i, I hope you do and you know you're diving in and getting your first feature is uh uh is, is a challenge but it's it's possible now it's possible yeah, to do yeah. uh, on the indie level uh and there's a lot of options for it you know so it's uh, I, I wish you luck with that Thank and you. i, and I hope you. you and i hope you you, you get to, you get to make it um because uh, I'd, I'd like to see you uh working at the feature level and, and seeing the, the yeah. crazy brain you have put together something in in, in 90 in the 90 minute format i find a part for you dave you know <laughs> hey there you go i like but that. it's it's great being a part of this festival like just uh really quick if i could just throw that in there i mean i've been aware of this festival it's always like it just seems like tracy uh, really has passion for filmmakers and very supportive. I've, I've always wanted to be a part of this film festival also because I used to live in North Hollywood, literally a, on Hartsook, a few blocks away from the Lemley. And uh, so it's, there's something special about being a part of this festival because of her and everything, her staff, the way that they, uh, you know, kind of run things over there. Um, but and also because, you know, just that connection to that neighborhood, you know, so it's just pretty wild to be a part of it. It's a it's a it's a wonderful festival. It, it, yeah. it opened a lot of doors for me and uh, it, it sort of changed my life. I hope it I hope it does the same for you. Uh, thank you for taking uh, time to, to talk with us about your film. Why am uh, And why am I? 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 Why am I?